Apert syndrome is a genetic disorder that was named for French physician Eugene Apert, who first described it in detail. It's characterized by malformations of the skull, face, hands, and feet. An alternative name for Apert syndrome is acrocephalosyndactyly, where acrocephalo refers to tall or peak skull, and syndactyly means fused fingers and toes. These are two particularly prominent features of Apert syndrome. In adults, the skull is a singular casing of bone surrounding and protecting the brain. But in a fetus or newborn, the skull is made up of multiple separate bones which is necessary to allow the brain to grow. These bones will fuse at their interfaces, called sutures, at specific times over childhood as brain growth slows. Cranial synostosis is a birth defect where one or more sutures fuse prematurely. The skull can't grow any more perpendicular to the suture, so it instead overgrows parallel to it and the head and face can take on an abnormal shape. Cranial synostosis is what causes the abnormal skull and face shape in Apert syndrome. Specifically, the coronal sutures, which run more or less along the anterior hairline, fuse early causing the skull to become tall and also short in the front to back dimension. This is called Turi brachycephaly. Apert syndrome also comes with some distinct facial abnormalities. There is mid-face hypoplasia, which is a sunken middle face, hypertellurism, or wide-set eyes, proptosis, the abnormal protrusion of the eyes, and a beaked nose. There can be oral abnormalities, including a narrow jaw, which leads to crowding of the teeth, cleft palate, and either too many or not enough teeth, to just name a few. Some secondary complications can arise from the abnormal skull and face shape. Examples include some degree of intellectual impairment arising from an elevated intracranial pressure, damage to the corneas from proptosis, strabismus where the eyes don't point exactly in the same direction, and breathing problems like sleep apnea from narrowing of the airways between the nose and the throat. In addition to the head and facial problems, the other main feature of Apert syndrome is syndactyly, where digits of the hands and feet are fused together to varying degrees. At a minimum, syndactyly in the hands fuses the middle three digits together. At worst, all five fingers are fused with only a single nail, a configuration called rosebud. FGFR2, a gene on chromosome 10, is the Apert syndrome gene. To understand why mutations in FGFR2 cause Apert syndrome, let's first understand the role of FGFR2 in non-disease individuals. The FGFR2 gene codes for the fibroblast growth factor receptor 2 protein, which is a transmembrane receptor that mediates signal transduction from the extracellular to the intracellular environment. It binds various ligands, which is what you call a molecule that's bound by a receptor called fibroblast growth factors. The downstream signaling is important for balancing proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis of precursor cells like osteoblasts so that bones are formed in just the right way during development. In people with Apert syndrome, specific missense mutations in the FGFR2 gene alter the 252nd or the 253rd amino acid in the FGFR2 receptor. These are gain-of-function mutations which cause FGFR2 to bind FGFs more strongly and with altered specificity. FGF signaling is excessive and dysregulated, causing osteoblasts to ossify or turn into mature bone at the inappropriate time and to fail to undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. This results in cranial synostosis and syndactyly. Apert syndrome is either inherited in an autosomal dominant manner, which is less common because the features of Apert syndrome mean that affected individuals are less likely to have children, or arises via a new or de novo mutation. The disorder exhibits a paternal age effect, where the incidence of the disease increases with the father's age. This is thought to happen because of a selected advantage of sperm regenerator cells that have acquired these FGFR2 mutations. 
The features of Apert syndrome can usually be recognized at birth and sometimes even prenatally via ultrasound. An MRI or CT scan of the skull may be needed to confirm and characterize cranial synostosis. To confirm the diagnosis, a genetic test that identifies an activating mutation in FGFR2 confirms the diagnosis of Apert syndrome. The main conditions in the differential diagnosis of Apert syndrome are the other cranial synostosis syndromes, which include Cruzon syndrome, Pfeiffer syndrome, and others. Interestingly, many of these syndromes are caused by either different mutations in FGFR2 or by mutations in the related FGF receptor genes FGFR1 and FGFR3. This underscores the importance of these genes in skeletal development. These syndromes can be differentiated from one another based on exam findings. For example, none has such severe hand and foot findings as in Apert syndrome, or by genetic testing. Unfortunately, there is currently no overall cure for Apert syndrome. The main interventions are surgical. When it comes to skull surgeries, the main goals are to allow the brain to grow, to minimize proptosis, and to improve cosmetic appearance. Key procedures include posterior cranial vault distraction where the furthest back part of the skull is separated and pushed away to make more room inside, frontal orbital advancement in which the bones of the forehead and brow are separated from the rest of the skull and move forward, and lay fort 3 osteotomy where the bones of the midface are pulled forward. Hand surgeries are also done, however, syndactyly is often severe enough that the end result usually isn't a normal hand with five functioning fingers. To summarize, Apert syndrome is an autosomal dominant disorder that features cranial synostosis, differences in facial appearance, and syndactyly caused by specific gain-of-function mutations in the FGFR2 gene that disrupt the balance of FGF signaling, which affects the way bones are formed.